نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل اقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من احلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین اعوذ باللہ ان اکونا من الجاہلین رب زدنی علما اللہم الہمنا رشدا و عزا من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارنا الحق حقا و رسکنا اتباعا اللہم ارنا الباطلا باطلا و رسکنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ سورة النساء ورس 57 Allah says والذین آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات سندخلهم جنات تجری من تحتها الانہار خالدین فیها عبدا عبدا لهم فیها ازواج متحرت متحرت وندخلهم ظلا ظلیلا And those who believe and do righteous deeds, we will admit them to gardens beneath which rivers flow, wherein they will abide forever. For them, therein, are purified spouses and we will admit them to deepening shade. Allah Azza wa Jal Allah the Mighty, the Exalted, the Sovereign, the Kind and the Merciful. Allah who is all loving, all seeing, all hearing, all knowing, is promising His Paradise and the Gardens of Paradise to people who are doing good. Two things. Number one, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who believe وَآمِلُوا صَوَالِحَاتِ And those who do righteous deeds. So before we proceed, we need to clarify and be sure that to be able to enter and to be allowed to enter the paradise, a combination of these two is mandatory. belief and righteous deeds anybody who has belief but does not have any righteous deeds with him will not be permitted to enter the jannah and anybody in this in the life of this world having a huge collection of righteous deeds but does not believe what a person in Islam needs to believe, then he also will not be permitted to enter into Jannah. In Arabic, Jannah means a garden. And the basic root word of Jannah is Jim Noon Noon. And from this root word, we have another word, Jinnin. Jinnin means the tiny embryo which is clinging into the mother's womb. This Jinnin or the embryo is, we all know, it is hidden. It is totally concealed. Nobody can see the Jinnin. Nobody can see the embryo. So similarly, Jannah in Arabic is a garden of in which the plantation is so very thick that the ground is hidden and cannot be seen. The foliage, the vegetations, the plantations are so thick and so plentiful that the soil underneath is just not visible. Today in our discussion we will be talking about the narrations, the scenes of the paradise and the Jannah. 
and I shall be reciting the verses of Quran and narrating the words of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that we can all realize, we can comprehend and we can visualize the blessings and the bounties offered by Allah Azza wa Jal in Jannah. The purpose is so that we can all get desires of Jannah. So that we, we all st start striving and struggling and working hard for Jannah. We start sacrificing for Jannah. We become the traders for Jannah. We start spending our, our lives, our time, our health, our wealth to barter for Allah's Jannah. This Jannah is, is something which is impossible to visualize completely in this world. The rewards of paradise, no person can just comprehend or they cannot be visualized. As Allah says in Surah as sajda verse 17, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَحْيُنٍ جَزَامْ بِمَا قَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ No person, no person can understand or comprehend, no soul knows what contentment and what refreshment for the eyes is hidden for them, a reward for what they did. And the words of the hadith are even even more clarifying. As a Sahal bin Saad anhu reports in Muslim that Prophet said that when he was asked about the paradise, he said there would be bounties, there would be blessings. Where? In the Jannah, which the eyes has not seen and the air has not heard. And no human heart can even perceive them. And then Prophet ﷺ recited this verse which I just recited. So the bounties and the blessings, the people will be rewarded, the believers will be rewarded in Jannah. They are simply uncomprehensible. The rewards of the paradise will will give joy and contentment to the soul and will be a delight for the eyes. Like there's a, there's a hadith, as a Sahal bin Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari that the Prophet said that a small place, and Prophet gave a simile, that a small place equal to an area of a whip in paradise is better than the whole world and whatever is in it. It is better than whatever is in the whole world and whatever is in it. Abu Huraira reports in Bukhari that Prophet said that a small area in paradise equal to a bow is better than everything on which the sun rises and sets. As Saad bin Abi Waqas reports in Tarimzi that Prophet said that the tiniest reward of the paradise which may be equal to the fingernail surface in this world will illuminate the earth and the sky. Hazrat Abu Sayyid reports in Tarimzi that Muhammad said, Death would be brought on the day of resurrection in form of a white colored ram. All these blessings and all these bounties will be forever. As Allah says repeatedly, whatever Allah mentions about the Quran, Allah oh, about the Jannah, Allah says, "Khalidina fiha, Khalidina fiha," and this is what the Hadith is saying. The Prophet ﷺ said the death would be brought on the day of resurrection in form of a white-colored ram, and then it would be made to stand between the Jannah and the Hell, and then the ram would be slaughtered in front of the people of Paradise and Hell. If it was possible to die with happiness, the people of paradise would die. And if it was possible to die with sorrow, the people of head fire would die. But now death would be slaughtered and there would be no death. 
So all these bounties of the paradise will be forever. And the, the angels will talk to the people of the paradise and they will tell them that you will, you will stay young and that you will never get old and you will stay healthy and you will never fall sick and you will stay here forever and you will never ask to leave and then you will you will stay alive forever and you will never meet death our our near and dear things we never want to part with them we never want to lose them our good days our happy times the period of our layer the period of our contentment we never want to change it so this will be this will be holiday nafiha the paradise what the paradise would be hasat ibn umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in bukhari that the prophet sallallahu alaihi said that the fragrance of paradise paradise will go as far as the distance of 40 years and hasat ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports that prophet sallallahu alaihi said nothing in the paradise is similar to the ones in this world except their names just names are going to be similar so that we are we will be familiar with them inshallah we will be one of them inshallah just the names will be familiar and the names will be similar and the beautiful words of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's hadith will make us understand what the bounties and the blessings of the paradise are as compared to the bounties of this world and what what being deprived and what being upset and what the miseries of this this world are as compared to the miseries of hell hazrat anas bin malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in muslim that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that a person a person who had led a life of ease and he was really blessed he had plenty and had, he had almost like all the bounties and blessings of allah in this world and on the day of resurrection this blessed person who had all the bounties in the world you you talk about and he had it you ask for it and he had it on the day of the resurrection he would be made to dip in fire only once and then he would be asked did you have any blessings did you have any comfort he would say by allah i know i know of no comfort and no blessings and then there would be a person there would be a person who led the most miserable life in the world he was one of the most deprived person he he was deprived of all the bounties and all the blessings in the world and then he would be made to dip once in the first pool of paradise and then he would be asked oh son of adam did you face any did you face any hardships were you ever miserable and deprived or were you ever distressed what would he say by allah No my lord never did i face any hardship or experience any distress or misery so this is what paradise and jannah is and this is what hell is the paradise the jannah is such that hazrat muaz radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that people of paradise will not regret so much on anything but the time spent in this world without the remembrance of allah they will regret that why did they spend the time without remembering allah and obeying allah and worshiping allah and following the commandments of allah to raise their ranks in the paradise how huge the jannah is how vast the paradise will be we just can't imagine we just can't comprehend allah allah explains like allah says in surah al-imran verse 133 was sari ila maghfiratin mir rabbikum wa jannatin arzuha samawati wal ardh uiddat lil muttaqin proceed march 
March in the way which leads you to the forgiveness from Allah and for the paradise which is as wide as the heavens and the earth. And it has been prepared for whom? Uiddat lil muttaqeen. For those who are God-fearing. For those who are the muttaqeen. For those who have piety. For those who are the pious. Allah says, Allah explains in in verse number 20 of Surah Dahar, Allah says, وَإِذَا رَعَيْتَ ثُمَّ رَعَيْتَ when you look and you look again, Naiman wa mulkan kabira. You will see what? You will see bounties, you will see blessings and a great dominion. There will be there will be such a vast, vast paradise and such a splendid, such a magnificent paradise with hundred grades in each grade. The distance between each grade between being the distance between the earth and the sky, the single shade of a single tree in the paradise being so much that if a horse rider rides for 100 years, he will not reach the end of the shade. And how many bounties and what great dominion? Prophet has been reported to say, in Muslim, Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates that Prophet sallallahu said that I know the person who comes out the last from the hellfire, the person who would be last to come out or to be taken out of hell. Prophet sallallahu said he will come out crawling and we'll see around him that everyone has taken their place in the paradise and there he will think that there is no place and nothing left for him. He will be asked, do you remember that time when you were in the hellfire? He will say, yes, I remember. Then he will be asked, how much place do you want in Jannah? He will be asked, remember, the last person coming out from the hell, Allah will ask him, how much place do you want in Jannah? So the person will ask. The person will then tell whatever he wants. And then he will be said, there's enough place for you in Jannah as much as you wish and more than 10 times equal to the world's whole space. The person will say, oh Allah, you are the king. Are you, are you just making fun of me? Hazrat Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu ta'ala who said, then Prophet Sallallahu laughed. And then he said that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, I'm not making fun of you. I'm not teasing you. Whatever I want, I do. And I have total power over it. So the person who will be the last person to come out of hell and the last person to enter into Jannah will be given whatever he desires. And there is another hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ even said, that he will ask for whatever he desires and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suggest him things he has forgotten to ask for and he will ask for even those things. Allah will go on reminding him that you've not asked for this and you've not asked for this and he will go on asking and he will be given all those things and after, after he stops asking, then he will be given 10 times more the possessions of this world to the person who will be the last to enter the paradise. And this is the paradise. We need to trade for this with the bounties in this world. Allah has called this paradise with, with different names in the Quran. Like in Surah Yunus verse 25, Allah says, Wallahu yadu ila dar is salam, wa yahdi mayasha ila siratim mustakim. Allah calls you to the home of peace, Daru salam, and He guides whom He, he wills to the straight path. Allahumma ihtina siratil mustakim. Then in Surah Nahal, verse number 30 and 31, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls this, this Jannah as. It has been called as the home of the God-fearing people, Darul Muttaqeen, the home for the pious people. Then 
In Surah Mu'minun, verse 39, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it as Darul Qarar, the place to stay, the place where the people will remain forever, the eternal home. Then in Surah Dukhan, verse number 52, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it Inna al-muttakina fi maqamin ameen fi jannatin wa ayoon. There is no doubt that all the God-fearing, all the pious and the people who are piety will be in a place of security, the secure home among gardens and springs. Then in Surah Yusuf, verse 109, Allah says, وَلَدَارُ الْآخِرَةَ خَيْرُ لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا وَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ the home of hereafter will be better, will be best for those who fear Allah and obey them. So just mark it here. Taqwa, piety, fear of Allah. As Allah says in Surah Rahman, وَلِمَنْ خَوْثَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَان Any person who fears to stand before Allah on the day of, on the day of resurrection, he will be blessed. He will be rewarded with two, two gardens in the paradise. So it is piety, it is piousness, it is the fear of Allah. Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names it as fi jannatin na'im. The gardens of delight, the gardens of blessings and bounties. And in Surah Kahf verse 31, Allah has called it as the everlasting gardens, jannatin adan. Jannatu Adinin, the everlasting gardens, the paradise which will be which will be lasting forever. So these are the different names which Allah has introduced his paradise and introduced his Jannah. And in this vast, splendid, glamorous Jannah full of blessings and bounties and Rahmah and player of the Allah. People are going to enter through gates. There are going to be gates of the paradise. And the angels will open the gates of paradise in reception of the people before they enter. And they will be greeting them. As Allah says in Surah Zumar, first number 73. alaykum. <laughs> All those people who were pious, who had piety, who were God-fearing, Lord, who were fearing to the Lord, they will be led to the paradise in groups. And when they will reach there, the gates will be opened before their arrival for their reception. And the keepers will say, what? Salamun alaikum. You have done well. Toibtum, you have done well. So enter here to abide therein. And the gates of Jannah, first the Prophet ﷺ would reach the gates. Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said that on the day of judgment, I would arrive first and knock at the gates of paradise. And the guards of paradise will ask who it is. I will reply, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the gates, the guards will say, I was ordered not to open the gates of paradise for anyone before you. Similarly, Hazrat Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Muslim, the Prophet said that on, day, on the day of judgment, the number of people from my ummah will be the largest and I will be the first one to knock at the gates of the paradise. Similarly, in a hadith, Prophet sallallahu has also clearly narrated that Hazrat Buraida radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Tarimzi that Prophet sallallahu said that there will be 120 rows of the people in Jannah and 80 rows will be of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and 40 rows will be of the people of the prophets of other Ummah. And there is another hadith reported in Muslim by Hazrat Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Prophet sallallahu was amongst his companions and he said, aren't you pleased that you should constitute one-fourth of the inhabitants of paradise? And then 
Prophet Salawaisalam after some times again repeated, Aren't you pleased that you should constitute one third of the inhabitants of paradise? The companions were continuously saying, We glorify Allah. And then in the end, Prophet Salawaisalam added, I hope that you would constitute half of the inhabitants of paradise. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us one of the followers of the Prophet wasallam who will be in one of those 80 rows. Make us be one of those bondsmen who will be who will be out of those two third of the bondsmen who will be entering the paradise. And then this paradise, the gates of paradise have been named according to the different good deeds. Hazrat Sahal bin Saad radiyallahu ta'ala who reports in Bukhari that Prophet said, Paradise will have eight gates. The paradise has eight gates and one of them is called Babur Riyan and through which none will enter but those who were observing, who observed fasting. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala who reports in Nasai that Prophet sallallahu was explaining about the doors of paradise and he said that there will be a door in paradise which will be which is called as Babu Salah and through this door only the people who used to offer Salah will be allowed to enter then there will be a door known as Babu Jihad the door of Jihad and people who were doing Jihad will be called from this door gate of Jihad and then there will be a gate of charity, Babu Sadaka. People who used to spend or give charity in the way of Allah will be called from the gate of charity. And then there will be a door, a gate of Riyan. The Babu Riyan will be the people who used to fast and used to do their obligatory fasts. And then there will be a, a door or a gate which will be known as Babu Yameen. When the Prophet ﷺ was explaining about these doors and was talking about the names of the doors, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and who asked, he said, who, who will be the lucky one who will be called from all these gates? Prophet ﷺ said, I hope you will be among those, O Abu Bakr. And similarly, Another occasion, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who asked another similar question that will there be some lucky people who will be called from all the eight gates? And Prophet sallallahu talked to Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who and said, seeing your keen interest, now that I see the keen interest you have to learn hadith, I expect that you will be one of them. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. And then the Babul Yameen, the gate of Yameen, the gate, the right gate of paradise, as reported by Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who in Muslim, Prophet sallallahu said that people by the right gate of paradise will be the people who will have no accountability to render. There will be no accountability made on them. People who will enter paradise without any accountability will be entering to the right gate of paradise. And people entering to this Babul Yameen or the right gate of paradise will be in another hadith reported by Hazrat Sahal bin Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala and who in Muslim, the Prophet said, 70,000 people or 700,000 people the narrator doesn't remember the exact number, would enter the paradise from my ummah holding and supporting one another's hands and the first among them will not enter till the last among them would enter. That is what 70,000 people would enter the Babul Yameen. These are the people who would not be accounted for. There will be no accountability held for them. And they will enter the Babul Yameen, the right gate of the paradise, oppressed all at a time. Allahumma hasibna khisab yasira. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. And then hadith also educates and informs our, 
of the people who are going to be permitted to enter from all the eight gates of Jannah as reported by Hazrat Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who in Muslim the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said whoever amongst my followers will perform the proper wudu and then say ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu and then the supplication taught by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa allahumma ja'alni min at-tawwabin wa ja'alni min al-mutatawakkirin then all the eight gates of paradise are open for him whichever gate he likes he may enter similarly hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in ibn habban the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that a woman who offers offers the five salah observes the fasts of ramazan safeguards her private past that is she is modest she is, maintains her chastity and she is obedient to her husband then on the day of resurrection she will be asked to enter the paradise from any gate out of the eight gates she wishes to hazrat anas bin malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in ibn majah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's promise that a muslim who has who whose three children died before the age of puberty and he was patient those children will meet him on all the eight gates of paradise and he will enter paradise from any of those eight gates and hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in muslim that the gates of paradise are not open on two days other than mondays and thursdays they are open and we also know by a uh, by a hadith reported by hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in muslim and bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that when the month of ramazan starts all the gates of paradise are open and all the gates of hell fire are closed and the devils are chained up so then these are the gates of the paradise and once the people will enter the paradise they're going to be grades and ranks in the paradise as we learn they're going to be 100 100 grades and 100 ranks in paradise and the uppermost grade of paradise is the grade of intercession which will be inshallah given will be given to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Mustad Ahmad that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that when you send the rood on me and then ask Allah for my intercession the companions asked what is intercession and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it is the topmost grade in paradise and only one person will be honored with it and i hope that i will be one of them so this is the uppermost and the topmost place of the paradise and then for the people of the paradise for the resident of the paradise the topmost level of the paradise is firdaus hazrat ubaidah bin samit radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in tirmizi that prophet sallallahu alaihi said there are 100 grades of paradise and the distance between each level is equal to the distance between the earth and the sky and the name of the topmost level is firdaus four levels of paradise sihan jihan farat and neel they flow out of the paradise and the throne of allah azza wa jal is above firdaus and then prophet sallallahu alaihi suggested that whenever you ask allah for paradise ask for firdaus and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us the supplication Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannatul firdaus remember high achievers are those who keep their aims and ambitions high may allah make us one of them and the distance between the two grades of paradise has been reported in another hadith by hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in tirmizi that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that there are 100 grades in paradise and the distance between each grade is equal to the travel of 100 years and the merciful the merciful allah has promised us that when the different family members will be in different grades and when a person at a higher grade of jannah will look down and find his family members in the lower grades or ranks of jannah and he will desire that they all be gathered then the merciful allah then the kind allah with his forgiveness 
and with his mercy will gather all of them in the upper grades of jannah allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannatul firdaus and all these these grades of jannah will be what has it Abu Bakr bin Abi Musa radiyallahu ta'ala who reports that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that there will be two gardens of gold for sabiqin and two gardens of silver for ashabul yameen Allahumma ja'alna minhum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us remember all this and Allah make us all desires of all this and once the people will enter enter into the paradise through these gates into this vast jannah into this splendid magnificent jannah they will be rewarded with huge mansions and huge splendid magnificent palaces in jannah allah promises allah promises in surah tauba verse 72 وعد المناف وعد الله المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات تجري من تحتها الانهار خالدين فيها ومساكن طيبة ومساكن طيبة في جنات عدن ورضوان من الله اكبر ذلك هو الفوز العظيم Allah has promised to the believer men and women gardens under which rivers will flow and they will dwell therein forever beautiful mansions pure mansions and palaces in gardens of aden and then the player of allah this is the supreme success we need to be desirous of and the mansions of paradise will be like what Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Tirmizi that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was reciting and he was explaining people asked him what is the paradise made of and he said one brick is made of silver and the other is made of gold and the cement is scented musk and the pebbles are of diamonds and pearls and the sand is saffron Whoever enters the paradise will live a very bountiful life will never feel any misery will always live here and will never die the clothes of the people of paradise will never wear out and their youth will be eternal then hazrat anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that allah has built allah has built the paradise with his own hands its one brick is made up of white pearl the other brick is of red rubies and yet another is of emeralds subhanallah subhanallah what remarkable magnificent color combination pearls and rubies and emeralds and bricks of gold and silver its sand is musk its pebbles are pearls its grass is saffron and after completion of the paradise Allah said to the paradise now say something the paradise said believers are blessed believers are blessed and then Allah said by my honor and by my dignity no miserly person will enter you my paradise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us spend help us spend our our gold our silver our wealth our riches our time unlike except all what we spent except all what we ex- spent and allah allah bless us with the rewards of this jannah hazrat abdullah bin qais radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in muslim there would be two gardens in paradise this will be the house This will be the palace we're going to be blessed like inshallah there will be two gardens in paradise the vessels and the contents of which will be of silver and two gardens whose vessels and containers and contents will be of gold Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the gold the silver the riches we have here help us trade for the for the for the eternal gold for the eternal silver for the eternal riches of jannah 
And then Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala who explains in Muslim, the Prophet said, then I was taken to the paradise where the domes of the buildings were made of white pearls and the sand was of, of musk. Hazrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala who was promised, the mother of believers was promised radiallahu ta'ala anha, was promised of a palace in the Jannah which was carved, which would be carved out of white pearl. SubhanAllah, what a color combination. I repeat again, I repeat again, one brick of gold and one brick of silver. And between these bricks, these bricks studded the white pearls, the rubies and emeralds, and the smell of saffron and musk, and scattered about the pebbles of pearls and diamonds, Yakut and Marjan. Allah, Allah help us trade for this Jannah. Make us the traders for Jannah. Make us, help us barter for this Jannah. And then, and then in these palaces, there would be tents, there will be tents in the paradise and the lawns of these palaces will be tents. And the tents will be like what? Hazrat Abdullah bin Qais radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim, in paradise there will be for the believers tents of single hollowed pearls, the breadth of which will be 60 miles. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wallahu akbar. 60 miles long tents and all of them carved out of white pearls. Subhanallah, Allah give us the faith on Jannah. Give us the strong belief of all these blessings of Jannah. And then, and then such beautiful palaces, such clean and pure, beautiful smelling, ornamented, decorated palaces with such beautiful tents. But we we, inshallah, we and all the dwellers of Jannah will not be just staying in their palace. They will be going out. They would be socializing. They're going to be gatherings. And you know what? They could be, they're going to be markets. They're going to be malls in paradise as well. We all women folk, we like to go out to the market. We all going to like going out shopping to malls. So they're going to be markets in the paradise as well. Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu said, in Jannah, there will be a market to which people will come on every Friday. So the marketplace of Jannah will be on every Friday. The northern wind will blow and will shower fragrances on their faces, on their clothes, and consequently, it will enhance their beauty and loveliness. So you see, all the people on Friday in Jannah, they will go to the marketplace and the northern wind like you see, we have those gold facials and the platinum facials and whatnot. I can just can't comprehend what sort of facials will be in the marketplaces of Jannah. And these, these winds which will be blowing in those marketplaces will enhance their beauty and loveliness. And when these people who were going to the marketplaces, they will return to their houses, to their wives, they will they would, would have increased in their beauty and their loveliness and their families will their wives will say to them we swear by allah you have you have been increased in beauty and loveliness since you've left us that you've returned from the marketplace and you're even more beautiful and you're even more lovelier than when you went and the people who were coming back they will talk to their wives who had not gone to the marketplace and they would swear we swear by allah that you have also been increased in beauty and loveliness since we left you. So people who stayed back home and who had not gone to the market would would always also enhance in beautiness, in beauty and loveliness. And the people who, who would visit the market would also enhance in their beauty and in their loveliness. Beauties and lovelinesses all around in Jannah. And all lovely and all beautiful going to the marketplaces, coming out of their palaces. These princes, these lovely princesses, these beautiful princesses will be roaming about in the gardens of paradise. These gardens of paradise will have trees 
will have blossoms, will have all forms of bounties, will be refreshing for the eyes and for the souls, as Allah says. Allah says in Surah Naba, verse 31, 32, Fihi wa wa And Allah says, this was Surah Rahman, verse 68 and 69. There will be what? There will be bounties of Allah, there will be fruits and there will be date palms and there will be pomegranates. And in Surah Naba, Allah says, there will be gardens and there will be grapeyards. And then they're going to be they're going to be fruits and they're going to be trees. The trees of the paradise will always remain lush green. As Allah says in Surah Muhammad, Surah Rahman, verse 64, Muhammadan, lush green trees verse number 48 surah rahman allah says zavata afnan wide spreading branches of lush green trees and what will be these trees made up of what will these branches be made up of hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala who reports in bukhari the prophet said in jannah a single shade of a tree is so large that even if a horse rider rides under it for 100 years, he will not reach from one end to the other. And the branches of these trees, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Tarimzi, Mafil jannati shajaratun illa wasaquha min zahabin. There is no tree in paradise. There will be no tree in Jannah, the branches of which will not be made up of gold. The people of Jannah coming out from palaces, from palaces, the bricks are of Jannah, the bricks are of gold and silver, and rubies and pearls, and rubies and pearls and emeralds gilded, and coming out into the gardens of paradise, where the branches are made up of gold, and what else? Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas ta'ala and who reports and the Prophet said the branches of the tree of the great tree will be of emerald subhanallah and the fiber of its stem will be of bright gold the believers garments their dresses their shirts will be made up of these branches branches of emeralds branches of bright gold Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Ibn Majah that Prophet sallallahu has promised. He's promised that anybody who says subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar upon uttering and reciting this, a tree will be planted for the person in paradise. And then Hazrat Jabir radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Tarimzi, the Prophet sallallahu said that whoever says Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah lazim. A date tree will be planted for him in paradise. And which date tree? The stem will be of bright gold in the tree, and the leaves of the tree will be of emerald. Hazrat Abu Sayyid Khudri radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Mustad Ahmad that Tuba is a tree in paradise. The clothes of the people of paradise will come from its calluses. And it will be as big as 100 years of journey. The shade will be as big as 100 years of journey. So the trees, the blossoms, the lush green plantation, and amongst them will be the fruits of paradise. The fruits of paradise, which Allah explains in Surah Waqiyah, وَفَاكِهَةٍ قَثِيرَةٍ لَا مَقْتُعَةٍ وَلَا مَمْنُعَةٍ the fruits will be plenty. They will be plenty. They will not be limited by seasons and their supply will never be cut off. Allah says in Surah Rad, verse 35, The provisions, the fruits of the paradise will be eternal. Allah says in Surah Mursulat, verse 41, 43, yashtahun. The fruits, the fruits of the paradise will what? 
with what they would desire. Will be what would they would desire, and it will be said: Eat and drink as much as you can. Eat and drink comfortably. What for? What for? What deeds you did? And then these fruits of paradise, may they be the bananas, the berries, the dates, the figs, the olives, the pomegranates, whatever they would be. They will be. They will be plentiful. They will be available for everybody in abundance, irrespective of the season. No permission will be required, and they will never diminish. They will not decay. And you know what? Allah says in Surah Dhahr, verse fourteen: "What daniyatan alayhim zulaluha, wa zulilat qutufuha tadlila." The shades would bend down on them, and the bunch of the fruits will hang low within their reach. the people of the paradise the fruits of the paradise will will be within their reach will be within their reach and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that when the person has a sohban radiyallahu ta'ala who reports in tabrani that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that this bunch of the paradise fruit of paradise when it bow down and come low prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whenever a person will pluck a fruit from the fruit of paradise then it will immediately replace it will be immediately replaced with a new fruit subhanallah like you know plucking fruits from the plant itself is like one of the greatest joys we can have and you know the sweetest and the most richest of fruits is that fruit which has ripened on the plant on the tree and the the fruit which is on the top most level is generally the sweetest because it is receiving the greatest of the sunshine and the sunlight but we generally cannot manage to get at at the top of the tree but in jannah the person who is living in jannah will look at the tree the tree of the fruit and the tree will bow down its all its leaves and the fruits in front of the person the way the person used to bow down in front of allah in his salah and the way the person is bow used to bow, bow down in humility in front of the fellow beings the branches of the trees of the janna will will bow down and the person will pluck out the fruit and there will be another fruit instead of that and how big will these bunches be Hazrat Ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنه reports in Muslim the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that I saw the paradise and I tried to pick out one of its bunches. Had I plucked it to you, had I plucked it, you would be eating from it till the end of this world. Such big bunches of fruit coming down in front of the people of the paradise to give them action. Pick out whatever you want. Eat out from wherever you want. whatever wherever whenever and then has a jabir was yallahu ta'ala and who reports in muslim name the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said paradise with all the bounties were brought in front of me like fruits and flowers and blossoms green pastures i wanted to pick out one of the bunches of grape for you but i stopped had i brought the bunch for you all the creatures of this world would not be able to eat and finish it Subhanallah Allah give us the faith Allah give us the belief and once the people will be in the in the gardens with all these trees with all these blossoms with all these flowers with all these fruits then in these in all these gardens will be the rivers of paradise the rivers of paradise which Allah mentions in Quran so many times <coughs> Surah Muhammad verse 15 Allah says Masalul jannati allati wa'id al-muttaqun The description the example of the paradise which Allah has mentioned Allah has promised for whom the god fearing the pious the muttaqin Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha Masalul jannati allati wa'id al-muttaqun فيها انهار من ماء غير اسن وانهار من من لبن لما يتغير طعمه وانهار من خمر 
قمر لذت للشار بينا وانهار من عسل مصفا they are going to be rivers they are rivers of water the taste and smell of which will not change there will be rivers of milk which which will be clean and pure and tasty and scrumptious the rivers rivers of wine which will be delicious to drink and rivers of pure and clean honey subhanallah subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar and what are these rivers going to be like hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala who reports in muslim that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said sihan jihan farat and neel are the rivers of paradise and then there will there's going to be the river of paradise is going to be what the river of kalthar hazrat anas radhiyallahu ta'ala who reports in tirmidhi that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that a river in paradise is which allah has gifted me its water is water is whiter than milk sweeter than honey and cooler than ice and there are birds around it so this is another river and you know what they're not just going to be rivers in the in the in the gardens of the paradise and people are going to go in the gardens and they're going to come across the rivers there no hadith tells us that the people of the paradise are going to divert out small channels and small streamlets from these rivers to their own houses has a taqim bin muadhiya radhiyallahu ta'ala who reports in tirmidhi that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that there are rivers of water and honey and milk subhanallah what lovely combination would it be just imagine blue rivers of clean water and then multicolored drinks and wines and then golden colored honey subhanallah there are rivers of water honey and milk in paradise and out of these rivers some small streams will diverge and flow into the palaces of the believers subhanallah and then and then besides these rivers there will be what ayun al janna the fountains the springs the fountains of janna allah has actually talked about these fountains and springs of janna talking about with their names there will be a fountain in janna with the name sal sabil this will be a fountain of wine the wine will be clear and shiny and will have a tint of ginger then there will be another fountain in paradise kafur it will be also a a, a fountain of a wine clear and pure wine and this will have the flavor of camphor and then quran mentions about a fountain of tasneem this will be of pure water and it will be only given to people in al abrar the people who were who were the people who were close to allah <coughs> it will be mixed with drinks from the rest of the fountains and then Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about these fountains like what as in surah ar-rahman verse number 66 Allah says fihima aynani nasahatan there will be springs from which the drinks will be gushing fiha aynun jariya surah ghasiya verse number 12 there will be springs in which water will be running out and crushing out and then Allah says in surah waqia wa ma masqubin flowing water flowing constantly thus there will be wine there will be water springs and fountains of wine and water gushing bubbling flowing running continuously subhanallah subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar and amongst everything in all these things taam ahl janna wa sharabuhum the food of the people of paradise and the drinks they're going to be served with the food the first meal prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is detail explain what the first meal of the person entering the janna will be has a sawban radiyallahu ta'ala who reports in muslim that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
was asked that what will be the people entering the paradise what will be they offered with what meal will be they given and he said that their breakfast that is the time immediately when they enter the break the, the paradise the breakfast which they will be served will be will be what the call of the fish liver and then people asked what would be their food after this and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a pulak which will be fed in different quarters of the paradise will be slaughtered for them and then they will be given drinks from the fountain of salsabil and you know what the first meal will be the first, uh, fish liver and the second meal will be this this beef that will be that will be offered to them and another hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained that the person when he will enter he or she will enter the paradise and will see a bird flying overhead and he will he will desire that in a specific way prepared food would come out of this bird immediately the same form of food made up of that bird's meat will be presented in front of him and will be served for him whatever whenever wherever in whatever form the people of janna would want to eat wala hum wala hum fiha ma yashtahun whatever they would desire i repeat again whatever whenever wherever howsoever a person would desire and this is what we need to tell our children there are people who like bird meat there are people who like fish meat there are people who like mutton or meat but there are people who are vegetarians the people who like who just like fruit and for children explain them explain them that they whatever they desire i remember i i was narrating all this to one of my grandsons and he asked will we actually have whatever we eat we will not be forced to eat whatever our parents want us to eat and i said yes you're going to have everything what you're going to desire you want to would you you would want to long to eat and then he just took off he said you daddy will we will we have chocolates i said yes and then he was would i get toblerone i said yes this is how we need to teach our children the bounties of paradise and then what will the drinks will be the drinks of tasneem rahi which will be served in cups and then there will be api kawthar all the drinks will be white and they will be refreshing and they will be fresh and you know what when all these wines the sharab at tahur with the tinge of ginger with the blend of kafur when they will be served out to them the people will not suffer from any form of headache or they will not lose their senses like as allah says in surah waqia verse number 17 to 21 explaining the whole position allah says yusaddauna anhu yusaddauna anha wa la yunzifun their heads will not be aching after those drinks and they will not be intoxicated that they will not lose their sense like the like drinking after the normal drinks in the people in the normal world we do and then all these all these food to eat the fruit the food the drinks how much will a person in the in the paradise will he be able to eat in the world we go to a restaurant and we walk in and we pay and we eat we try to eat as much as we can but you know we take two helpings and we take three helpings and then we are all full we can just look at the di- dishes and we can just see and we can smell but we can't eat more but you know what in paradise hazrat ibn narqam radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in the brani the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said each person in jannah will be given control in eating and in sexual se- sexual relationships equal to 100 persons so there you are you can eat as much as you can you can drink as much as you can out of all the bounties of the food of the drinks of the food and then eating all this there will be no filth no dirt no whiting no nothing just just sweating and everything gone and cleared and the body clean and pure and then what will we be wearing inshallah what will we be wearing inshallah لباس اهل الجنه وخليهم 
the garments and the jewelries of the people of the paradise. Allah mentions so many times Surah Hajj, Surah Kahf, Surah Fatir. Like Allah says in Surah Kahf, verse, verses between 30 and 31, Allah says that in Jannah, يُحَلَّوْنَ فِيهَا مِنْ أَثَابِرَ مِنْ ذَحَبٍ وَيَلْبَسُونَ فِيهَا مَنْ خُضْرًا مِنَ مِنْ سُنْدَسٍ وَإِسْتَبْرَقٍ مُتَّكِينَ فِيهَا عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ نِعْمَ الثَّوَابِ وَحَسُنَتْ مُرْتَفَقًا They will be adorned with bracelets of gold and they will wear green garments of fine silk and heavy brocades and then they'll be reclining on raised thrones. Similarly in Surah Hajj Allah says There's a lot of things يُحَلَّوْنَ فِيهَا مِنْ أَثَابِرَ مِنْ ذَحَبٍ وَلُّولُهُمْ وَلِبَاسُهُمْ فِيهَا حَرِيرٍ Placelets of gold and pearls and garments of silk. This is Surah Hajj, verse number 23. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Dhahar, verse number 20, Allah says, عَلَيْهِمْ سِيَابٌ سُنْدُسٌ خُزْرٍ وَإِسْتَبْرُقٌ وَحَلُّوا أَسَابِرَ مِنْ فِزَدٍ وَسَقَاحُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابٍ تَحُورًا so, so many times does Allah mention that they will be adorned. They will be adorned with bracelets of gold and silver and pearls. The color of the dresses, the materials of the fabrics have been, have been informed by the name green garments. The fabrics have been named Sundas, Istavrak, Atlas, Diba, Harir, fine silk, soft silk, thick silk, brocades. And where, where till the adornments will go? Hazrat Abu Huraira who reports in Muslim, the Prophet said that a believer will be adorned with the ornaments in paradise up to the place where the water of the wuzu reached. So they will be adorned with men and women both. How expensive, how beautiful, how, mag how magnificent and how splendid these adornments and jewelry would be? Hazrat Saad bin Abi Waqas who reports in Muslim that Prophet said that if one of the inhabitants of paradise wearing his bracelet would look or would peep into the world, it will fade the brightness of the sun the same way the stars fade out in the sunlight. So this would be the bracelet this would be just one, one diamond or one pearl or one ruby or emerald on the di on the bracelet of the purple of the Jannah would be so costly, would be so expensive, would be so shiny, would be so beautiful, would be so splendid, would be so remarkably shiny and bright that if just wearing it, he would peep in the shine and the brightness would just fade out the sun. And the scarf of the lady of the paradise, the Prophet says, would be expensive, would be more expensive to whatever there is in the world and hereafter. خَيْرٌ مِّنَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا خَيْرٌ مِّنَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا would be what? Just a stone on the scarf of the lady of the paradise. And you know what? When we are all decked up, when we are wearing beautiful clothes and we are wearing our ornaments and we are all wearing our adornments, what do we need to do? What do we feel like doing? Do we stay back at home? No, we need, we feel like going out and gatherings and socializing and moving about in our friends so that is exactly what it will be like we and the people of paradise in their palaces and those beautiful paradises those beautiful par palaces with those tents and with those lawns sometimes people will come out and go to the marketplaces and sometimes all clad in these beautiful robes of Jannah and all adorned with these beautiful jewelries of Jannah all young and beautiful and youthful will walk into gatherings and parties and social get-togethers and how beautiful these gatherings are going to be Allah says 
Allah says as in Surah Rahman, Muttaqeena ala furushin batayin o khamin istabrik. They will be reclining on couches lined with silks or brocade. And then Allah says in Surah Tur, verse number 20, Muttaqeena ala sururim masfufa. They will be reclining on thrones arranged in ranks, in lines, in rows. They will be facing one another on the thrones and there will be cups of wine will be served for them. Allah says, Allah says in Surah Yasin, verse number 55 and 56, Inna ashabil jannatil yawmi fi shughlin faqihun hum wa azwajuhum fi zalalin ala al-arwa'iki muttaqi'oon. There is no doubt that all the people of Jannah, there is absolutely no doubt that all the people of the Jannah will be busy, will be enjoying, will be committed, will be busy in joyful, enjoyable things, in joyful things. They and their wives will be in the pleasant chaise, reclining on thorns, sitting like royal people, all dressed up in royal robes. And in gatherings of royalties, the thrones, the thrones, Quran and Hadith tells us they will be woven of gold and precious stones and they will be covered with silk and brocade. And there will be royal people sitting with, sitting, reclining on them, facing one another. And there will be cushions set in rows on all these thrones. Namariko matfufa, cushions set in rows on these thrones. There will be throws. There will be thrones of gold and on these thrones will be cushions thrown back, cushions of brocade and the thrones covered with brocades and silk. And then what? Zarabiu Mabususa. There will be on the floor, there will be spread out rich green carpets and rugs. And then what? Wildanu Muhalladun. Like what? Luluan Murjan. Servants, eternal servants. Imagine no servant. Christ is all gone. Young, youthful, beautiful, eternal servants serving drinks and drinks in what? Goblets of silver and silver, silver crushed like glasses as thin, transparent silver like glass. Goblets made, goblets of glass made out of silver filled up with drinks from bubbling fountains. And then after that, these royalties reclining on all those thrones, reclining on all those cushions will be served drinks. And then there will be fruits and then there will be meat of birds and then there will be meats of all kinds. It is what the best of event management. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallah, wa akbar. And then after this, the people of paradise, men will be young, 30 to 40 years of age, with no hair on their bodies, just hair on their heads, big blue eyes, and they will remain they will remain young forever. No dirt, no filth, no excreta, no runny nose, just sweat, and that even with the smell of musk. No misery, no worries, no responsibilities, no duties. Just free, pensive, heavy, relaxed, entertained, and forever. The women in paradise, the women in paradise free from all physical sicknesses. All physical weaknesses, no internal weaknesses, no anger, no envy, no grief against one another, no hard, no harsh feelings against one another. Surah Baqarah, verse number 25, Allah says, Pure companions. Allah says, in Surah Waqiyah, verse number 35 to 38, Inna ansha'na hunna insha'an faja'alna hunna abkara uruban atraba li ashab al yameen People of the right hand, companions of the right hand, Allah will create for them the wives. They will be specially created all over again. They will, made, they will be made virgins. They will be, they will be loving wives and they will be equal in age.
The wives will be created all over again. They will be virgins and they will be remain virgins even after meeting their husbands. And they will be the same age as their husbands. And they will love their husbands overwhelmingly. Allah says in Surah Rahman, Allah says in Surah Zukhruf verse 70, Udkhulu al-jannata wa antum wa azwajukum tuhbaroon. You will be rejoicing with your spouse, with your wives. And the, and the women in paradise will be young, they will be virgins, they will stay youthful forever. Their beauty will go on increasing every day after day. And then how beautiful the skin, the skin of the women in the paradise has been compared as, as with the layer which is immediately beneath the shell of the egg. Pure white, no pallor. No spots, spotless, soft, smooth, supple, thin, no wrinkles. How, how pretty, how beautiful she is going to be. Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who reposed in Bukhari, the Prophet said that if she will, she will cast a glance, even for a moment she would have cast a glance in this world, it would illuminate everything between the east and the west and fill up the atmosphere with, with fragrance. And the stole of the maiden of paradise is better than the world and whatever, it, whatever there is in it. So this is the bound. This is the stunning beauty. Stunning beauty. The youth, virginity, staying youth, Staying young forever, the beauty multiplying, shining faces, clothes, jewelry. Fabi ayi alai, rabbikuma tukaziban. It is reported in Muslim that Prophet said that faces of the first group of people who enter the paradise will be glowing like full moon. The faces of the second group of people who enter the paradise will be shining like shiny stars in the moon. And the men of both groups will have vibes and the marrow of their shanks. It is reported in another hadith that the women of the paradise in a day, the women wearing the women of the paradise in a day, she will be wearing 70 layers of clothes. 70 layers of clothes and in spite of that, the marrow of the shank will also be visible. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. Wa la ilaha illallah. Wallahu akbar. And then, last but not the least, would be two biggest rewards of Jannah. Ridwanullahi akbar. Allah's pleasure. As Allah mentions in Surah Taba, verse number 72, The pleasure of Allah. This is the supreme success. The pleasure of Allah will be like what? As Hadith tells us, as Abu Sayyid Qudri radiallahu ta'ala reports in Muslim, that Prophet sallallahu said that Allah would talk to the inmates of paradise and would say, O oh, dwellers of paradise, they would respond and they would say, What? Labbaika Rabbana wa sa'daika wa al-khayru fi yadaika. O Allah, we are your servants. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, What? Are you pleased now? That now that I've given you the bounties and the blessings of Jannah, are you pleased now? They would say, why should we not be pleased, O oh Allah? You have given us. You have given us what you have. You have given us you, what you have not given to any of your other creatures. And then Allah would say, may I give you, may I give you something even more superior than that? And they would say, O oh Lord, what can be more excellent than this? And he would say, I will cause my player to alight upon you and I will now afterwards never be, never be annoyed with you. The player of Allah, the player of Allah, 
the raza of Allah, this will be the biggest reward for the people of Jannah. They had strived, they had struggled, they have worked hard throughout their worldly life to seek the player of Allah and to save themselves from him being displeased, from his wrath. And now when they will be blessed with his player, this would be the biggest reward. He will never be annoyed with them. And then the glimpse of Allah in paradise, the glimpse of the sustainer, the glimpse of the creator in Allah, in the paradise. Allah says in Surah Qiyamah, verse number 23, 20, 22, 23. Wujuhu nadhira, ila there will be faces on the day of resurrection which will be bright and which will be beautiful. Why? Because they will be looking towards Allah. When Prophet ﷺ recited this verse, the companion asked him something and he answered. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Muslim that Prophet ﷺ was asked by his companions that will we see Allah on the day of resurrection? And Prophet ﷺ asked, do you feel any trouble in seeing the moon when it is when it is a full moon at night? They said no. Then he asked, do you feel any trouble in seeing the sun at noon when there are no clouds over it? They said no. Then Prophet ﷺ explained, you will not feel any trouble in seeing Allah Azza on the day of resurrection any more than you do in seeing any one of them. And what player it would be as a Suhaib ta'ala and who reports in Muslim, the Prophet said that when the people will enter the paradise, Allah will ask him, Allah will ask them, do you need anything else? They will say, oh Allah, have you not brightened our faces? Have you not entered us into Jannah? Have you not saved us from hellfire? What else can we ask? At that moment, in a flash, the curtain between Allah and them will be raised. Looking at Allah would be more dearer to them than any other delight which they were showered with in paradise. So this, so this is paradise as explained in Quran and as narrated in the words of As-Sadiq al -Amin, the truthful, the trustworthy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal, you are the mighty, you are no doubt the exalted, you are the masters of master, you are the rulers of rulers, Allah you are the kind, Allah you are the merciful, Allah you are all loving, you are all seeing, you are all hearing, you are all knowing, Allah Accept our dua, accept our supplications of today. We supplicate to you in the words of Quran. Allahumma inni as'alukal jannatul firdaus. Allahumma inni as'alukal jannatul firdaus. Allahumma inni as'alukal jannatul firdaus. Allah, we, we beg you for jannatul firdaus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us remember all what we heard and we learned today. Allah, help us remember and Allah help us believe and Allah help us have faith in all what we help we heard and we learned today. Help us strive and struggle to live according to your commandments. Help us be steadfast on the path of Jannah. Allah bless us, the best of companions on the path of Jannah. Allah gather us all. Allah gather us all, our families, our ancestors, our descendants, our children, 
gather us all in the gardens and the palaces and the mansions of Jannah. Make us all the traders of Jannah. Make us all barter, barter all our worldly bounties for the bounties of Jannah. Rabbibni li'inda kabaitan fil Jannah. Allahumma inni as'alukal Jannatul Firdaus. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim. Wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim. Rabbana la tuzay qalubana ba'da iz khadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahhab. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk. سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين سمامين